In this section, we are going to move on with systems of linear equations. We're going to do the exact same thing that we did in the last section, but instead of solving it by substitution or elimination, we are going to solve it by using the matrix method. So the first question that you probably have is, what is the matrix method, meaning what is a matrix? Well, the definition of a matrix is a rectangular array of numbers, which might or might not help you any at all. If you are familiar with computer science, then you probably know what array is. Well, array is just kind of a row or a stack of numbers, basically, and a matrix is when I put all of these rows or all of these stacks together. You see I have this image over here on the right. This is basically a matrix. It's just a grid of numbers. And then to identify the matrix, we have the brackets on the outside, like you see like this. Some other definitions that you need to know along with this, the entries are each number inside my matrix. So the eight is an entry, the zero is an entry, so on and so forth. So each of these numbers are classified as an entry. Then the rows, of course, are the horizontal list of numbers and the columns are the vertical list of numbers. Sometimes we need to talk about the dimensions of the matrix. Well, the dimensions are the number of rows, in this case we have three rows, times the number of columns. In this case, we have two columns. So the dimensions of the matrix that I have here is a three by two matrix, because there's three rows by two columns. Something else to know is the plural of matrix are matrices. So if you hear me say that, I'm just talking about multiple matrices, see, multiple matrices or matrices. All right, now that we know what a matrix is, let's go ahead and expand on that. Let's talk about an augmented matrix. Basically what an augmented matrix is, is it takes a system of equations, just like we saw in the last section, and it puts it into matrix format. So it takes each of the coefficients, meaning the numbers in front, and it puts it in the format there. So my augmented matrix of this example here would put a two in the first box, a negative three in the next. The answers are also included, so a seven on the right, and then a one for my x value here, a four for my y value, and a negative two for my answer value. So that's kind of hard to see, but basically it is, again, just the coefficients that you see, including the answers on the right. Typically with augmented matrices, we put a line to separate, hey, the left side of this is the variables, my x and y variables, and the right side of this is my answers. So the answers in this are seven, negative two. So we have just set up an augmented matrix. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you how the matrix method is basically the elimination method, just in a little bit different format. So I have a system of equations here. The very first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to solve it using my elimination method, which you should be very familiar with. And then I'm going to put it into matrix format, and I'm going to solve it the exact same way. So in this system of equations, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to eliminate my x variable. So to eliminate the x variable, I need to make this a multiple of this one here, and of course the opposite sign. So I do that by multiplying my first row by negative 3. So if I multiply this row by negative 3, that gives me negative 3x minus 12y is equal to negative 42. I compare that up with the exact same second row that I had, 3x minus 2y is equal to 0. So that's that system of equations here. And when I add those together, that gives me a negative 14y is equal to negative 42. Okay, so now I need to figure out what does this mean? What do I really have left when I'm comparing my system of equations? Well, what I did was I eliminated my x variable, and I'm going to think about I did that in my second equation. So in my second equation, I'm going to replace it with my new thing here, 
And my first equation, I'm going to keep exactly the same. So I'm going to keep that x plus 4y is equal to 14. And then my second equation becomes negative 14y equals negative 42. So this is now the two equations that I have in comparison with my system of equations. Okay, well, if I wanted to look at this a little bit farther, I look at my second equation, and I know that I can solve for y very easily. I do that by dividing my second row by a negative 14. So again, if I were to set this up as a system of equations with two equations, my first equation, my x plus 4y equals 14, is going to stay. And then if I take this row and divide everything by negative 14, that gives me y is equal to 3. That is my system of equations. Now, we can officially stop here because we have one of our variables, and if we wanted to figure out what the second variable was, we could plug this y value in back to my first equation, and that's going to give me my x variable. So I have x plus 4 times my y value, which is 3, is equal to 14. This works out to be 12, so let me subtract 12 from both sides. So that gives me my x value is 2. So if I wanted my overall system of equations, I have my x value is equal to 2, and my y value is equal to 3. So that gives me the solution of 2, 3. Now I'm going to do this exact same thing, but I'm going to do it in matrices method. So basically I'm going to do exactly what I do here, except for instead of seeing the x and the y and the equal sign, I'm just going to see the coefficients, or I'm just going to see the numbers in front. So if I start out with my system of equations here, and I put this into an augmented matrix, meaning, again, just my coefficients in front, I would have a 1x, a 4y is equivalent to 14, and then the 3x minus 2y is equal to 0. So this is my augmented matrix. That's my first step, is just the original equation. Now, if I were to move on to the next step, meaning if I look at this down here, I could put this also into a system of equations. And so that system of equations would be a 1x plus a 4y is equal to 14. And then I eliminated my x variable, so 0x minus 14y is equal to negative 42. So this is my second augmented matrix, which compares to this system of equations. And if you wanted to see how we got from step one to step three, basically what we did was we took my row one, meaning my first equation, row one, and we multiplied it by negative three, and here's that scratch work to see it here, and then I added it to row two. So here's adding it to row two. And whatever we got out of it, meaning this here, I know that's a lot of scribbles, that equals my new row 2. And so again, I took my row 1, I multiplied it by negative 3 to give me this scratch work here. I added it to my second equation, or my row 2. And when I got that, I got this equation here. And so that became my new row 2. Okay, now if I wanted to look at the next step, so look at this next matrix here. That, if I put it into augmented matrix form, a 1, a 4, a 14, notice my first row didn't change, and now my x still says 0, my y becomes 1, and then my answer over here on the right becomes 3. So that becomes into my matrix E format. Again, all I'm doing is taking the coefficients and the answers and putting them in a box. So I'm switching it from elimination method into matrix E method, but I'm doing the exact same work that I did before. And so we knew to get from this step to this step, all we did was we took our second equation, which is identified as row 2, and we divided it by negative 14. And then once we got this, we could put this into our final answer. So if I wanted to put this into matrix form one more time, I know my second row is not going to stay. I have a 0x plus 1y equals 3. But if I also look at this here, 
I have a 1x and a 0y that's equal to 2. And so this gives us the system of equations. If I were to translate this back into x and y format, this would tell me my x variable is equal to 2 and my y variable is equal to 3. And so this is basically the same thing between elimination and matrices method. We're doing the same thing, it's just written in a little bit different notation. Instead of the x's and the y's and the equal signs, we're doing it in a box with some numbers. Okay, when we're doing it in matrix method, there's three operations that are acceptable, and then everything else is virtually unacceptable. So let's talk about what we can do if we're just looking at the matrix method and we are not going to show any of this outside work. We just want to move from these steps here to here. So these three operations that we can do to get our matrix method into the format that we want it to get in to solve our system of equations are these here. I can interchange any two rows. And this one's really obvious to see once we have it in actual equation format. So if I had the system of equations 2x plus 3y equals 5 and negative x minus 4y is equal to 2, that's basically the exact same thing as negative x minus 4y is equal to 2 and then 2x plus 3y is equal to 5. It doesn't matter in my system of equations which equation can be stacked on top of each other. Well, that goes the same way for matrix format. It doesn't matter which is which. So that means I can interchange any two rows and that be acceptable. Okay. The next operation that I can do is I can multiply each entry in a row, so I'm multiplying a whole row, by the same non-zero constant. So basically the fancy thing that this is saying is I can multiply a row by a number, as long as that number is not equal to zero. And if I can multiply a row by a number, that also means that I can divide a row by a number. And so let me just show you when we can do that. And we actually did that a couple of different times back in this step. Now I know there's a lot of different notation back here, but one place that we did this was we multiplied my row one by negative three, and that became this to this. So that's just one example of me showing you why we can do that. Another example of us doing that is taking this work here and not only multiplying it by number, but we can also divide it by number. So I took my row two here and I divided it by negative 14 and that gave me that there. So that tells us why process number two is acceptable, right? Same thing if I look at this system of equations down here, if I multiplied my second row by negative 5, that's okay. It's not changing my equation any. It's keeping it balanced all the way across. Okay, now my last row operation that we can do is we can add a non-zero multiple of one row to another row. So this is basically saying I can do step number two. I can multiply a row by a number and then add it to a different row. And we utilize this when we mostly want to eliminate something, like we did the elimination example. So my perfect example of this here is this right here. I took row 1, and I multiplied it by negative 3, and then I added it to my row 2. So I can multiply one row by something and add it to a different row. And we do that most of the time when we want to eliminate something. So when we did that, we eliminated our x variables. Okay, so those are the operations that we are allowed to do in matrix method. So now that we know how to do this, I'm going to stop this video here. And in my next video, I'm going to actually solve a system of equations using the matrix method. So using what we see over here on the right without the work that we see over here on the left.